Hey everybody, Mr. Mangatosh here and Mac OS Monterey Beta 6 is finally here. After three weeks of waiting, one of the longest periods between beta releases in the last couple of years. In this video, I'm gonna go over all the changes in this release that are gonna be important to you. I'm also gonna go over the details, benchmarks, and I'm gonna talk about some news for Open Core Legacy Patcher and unsupported Macs. We got a lot to cover. Don't forget, we're gonna talk about universal control. Let's get started. The build number for Mac OS Monterey Beta 7 is 21A5506J. The build number for macOS beta 5 is 21A5304G. Now the install was pretty straightforward this time. I timed both the preparation and the installation. Before we continue to that, I wanted to show you the message that came up on beta 5. If you see this message, your Mac is running the latest software update allowed by your administrator, macOS Monterey beta 12. Just wait a little. It took a little time for this message to disappear. And then after that, the standard update window showed up that says, an update is available for your Mac, Mac OS Monterey 12 beta 6, and then you can finally click update now. So again, if you see this message here, just give it a little bit of time and it should show. You can also close system preferences and reopen it, or you can always go into terminal and run software update dash L for list, and it'll run a software update through the terminal and force an actual update to make sure that you're updated. And as you can see, we're on beta six, so no software is available. Now the sizes for the update here, we've got 2.9 gigabytes for a total install size. It's 2.2 from beta five to beta six. Now for the time that it took for the installation, I timed eight minutes to prepare the update. And that's what it shows it, when it finishes downloading the update, it goes into preparing the update mode mode and then 18 minutes once it restarted to the installer with the black screen and the progress bar. So 20 minutes total from beta 5 to beta 6. When Apple releases their patch notes here, they usually include all the patch notes in here. So you can see all the way from beta one all the way to beta six. But what I usually do is I'll take a look of what is only changed in beta six. One enterprise fix for companies and schools. There was four new features, 12 known issues, 10 resolved issues, and six new deprecations. I'm also keeping track of the actual Delta update sizes. I talked to you about how it's 2.2 gigabytes from Mac OS Monterey beta five to beta six, but if you were going from beta 4 it's 2.5 gigabytes and if you're going from beta 3 it's 2.8 gigabytes. Apple Silicon M1 firmware was updated to 7429.40.38 and the T2 bridge OS update that runs on the T2 security chip was updated to 1916.10.506.5.1. Apple also did not release the full installer app of macOS Monterey Beta 6 yet. That usually comes with the public release beta that usually comes tomorrow or the next day after the main developer release. And then I'll post the full installer app on my website. And also Apple did release the IPSW DFU restore file for Apple Silicon devices to be able to restore and fix those devices. Let's talk about some of the new features of Mac OS Monterey Beta 6. iCloud Private Relay is now in beta form in iOS. And what that means is that Apple mentioned that once iOS 15 is released to the public, the private relay is not fully ready for prime time yet, it's in beta. So if you take your iOS device or your iPad OS device and then look in there now on iOS 15 beta 7, it'll show that it is in beta. Now, when I went into the iCloud settings on beta 6, it's not in beta mode. It doesn't say beta on it like it does on iOS uh, 15 beta 7. So we'll have to see if Apple does change that. FaceTime share play and watch together function is now delayed until after public release for iPad OS, iOS, and Mac OS Monterey. And you can see what that feature is right here for share play watch together. So bring movies, TV shows to your FaceTime calls and enjoy real time connection with your friends watching the same videos. So that neat function that they showed on at WWDC is not going to be radiant until after the public launch, probably in the first dot one release of maybe Mac OS Monterey or iOS 15.1. The next thing is sidecar system preferences is now missing in beta six. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if we go into the system preferences on beta five over here, here's sidecar. But if we go into system preferences over here in beta six, it's nowhere to be found. Now, what was interesting is, is that you can still use sidecar feature if you wanted to by going into the displays 
and then going into Add Display and clicking into your iPad. And you can see it automatically switches to Sidecar and Sidecar does work. And you can see that the settings are right here to hide the touch bar and the sidebar here. So at least you can still use some of the controls without going into the System Preferences pane to be able to modify and change the Sidecar preferences. So it's really weird that that's gone and missing in Beta 6. The next thing is the Power Nap feature that I talked about in the previous video of Mac OS Monterey Beta 5. I said that Power Nap, if you go into the System Preferences Energy Saver, Power Nap is missing. So if we go back into Energy Saver on the T2 Mac Mini from 2018, you see Enable Power Nap, but it's not here. And I said, maybe that's changed in Mac OS Monterey Beta 5, but what really happened after I investigated it is, and I'll show you what that what happened here. If you look at what is Power Nap, it says Power Nap is available on Mac computers with flash memory and lets some Mac computers stay up to date even while they're sleeping. Your Mac goes to sleep, Power Nap activates periodically to update information. Now, what's interesting is, is that one of the features of the M1 chip is it has an always on processor. It runs at so, such a low power that it never has to go to sleep to be able to wake up to check those messages. It can do it because it's an always on processor. And I'm glad that we figured out why that's missing in the energy saver preference pane. The next change has to do with Safari again. Each change Apple's making to Safari in each release is due to some feedback. A lot of users reached out and said that they did not like the new tab layout in Safari. So Apple finally lets us go in there and change it back to, to separate from the address bar at the top and then the tabs under here and then compact everything and all there. And again, it's divided on whether people like it or not. Some people like it like this way, but other people like it the old standard way. And Apple finally let us do it. But in this situation, Apple changed the location of some of the settings. So I'll show you what that looks like on Safari Beta 5. If we go in here, you can see that it's totally different. First of all, they changed the wording so it's moved in a little bit in the center, and this is all one sentence, and over here, it's two sentences in Beta 5. And look how they changed and they grouped all of the primary tab layouts in the area right here under the compact and the separate. And you can see there that automatically collapsed tabs into icons is way down here, kind of lost. And the show color in the tab bar option is actually all the way in advance over here. So it was a great change for them to put everything here to be able to manage the new Safari settings. I think that's a great change. The next thing I want to cover was Outlook 365 application crashes on Beta 5. What was interesting was a lot of you reached out and said, hey, listen, what is going on with Outlook? It's crashing. I can't even use it. So the good news is I've already heard from a couple of users that says that after they updated to Mac OS Monterey Beta 6, Outlook no longer crashes. But you're going to have to let me know because I need a couple more confirmations. Is hopefully that is fixed in the latest release. Also, I wanted to talk about the world map. The world map is only available on M1 Mac. So let's look at what that looks like. I've got it open up on a T2 Mac over here, but when we open it up on a M1 Mac, it shows you this really neat rotatable world that you can zoom in on. It looks really great, but unfortunately it's not available on T2 and below Macs. And I'm hoping that Apple will kind of do the same thing they did with live text. Live text was only available early on the M1 Macs, and then Apple finally made it available for you to be able to use on previous versions of Intel T2 Max. So let's hope that they do that with the Apple Maps version for the world too. I think this is a really cool option. Let's talk about some issues. One thing I forgot to mention in the previous video was is that Legacy Contacts has been removed from macOS Monterey 12 Beta 5. Now what is Legacy Contacts? Legacy Contacts is part of the Digital Legacy Program. It allows you to designate people as Legacy Contacts so they can access your account and personal information in the event of your death. And that's a really great feature to be able to have, and it was removed in five, and it hasn't returned in beta six, and I'll let you know when that has returned. And that is accessed through the system preferences in your iCloud settings once that returns. Another issue is with beta six is there might be issues with wake up when you're using dual monitors on your laptop. Apple says a workaround is to connect a power adapter that came with your Mac. So maybe it's with docking stations or something like that. Apple's not really specific on that, so that's what that might be about. The next thing is fixes that have to do with focus and using
using Focus and Do Not Disturb in Surrey, those are fixed. And there's also an enterprise for schools and businesses that if you're using apps and services that require installation of PAM modules that require user authenticate, now require user authentication, or use of privacy preference policy control profiles from an MDM that authorizes modifying system administrator files or full disk access. So that's going to be an interesting thing that we're going to have to look into. And it's kind of weird that Apple dropped this so late in the beta and didn't let us know beforehand. So let's talk about the most important thing that you're probably wondering about again. Where is universal control? It is not available in macOS beta 6. Now, how can I tell that? So all you got to do is go into system preferences, go back to the main settings, go into displays. And if you see advanced here, it is activated and it's ready to go. I can tell that because I just came out with a video yesterday that talked about a really cool find by Twitter user Zooaway that basically figured out how to activate universal control on just Macs and get them to work through multiple Macs. And I did a demo on this just the other day. I'll put a link in the description that shows you how to do that. So let's take a look what that looks like in this T2 that I already activated. So we'll go back into system preferences. We'll go into displays. We'll click the down button and you can see there's the advanced and look at that link keyboard and mouse. And you can see which ones are compatible by check marks. Now, just because it's check mark doesn't mean it's enabled because I have the iPad here, but it doesn't work. So let's see how that works. I, all we need to do is bring the cursor down. As you can see, I had to set the arrangement up so the MacBook Pro is under here. When you see the Monterey background, that's the primary screen for that particular computer. As you can see on here, the Monterey background is the primary screen on the MacBook Pro. So all we need to do is bring the cursor right down. As you can see, it goes right through to this one and you can do anything you want. If you want to take this screenshot and drag it up here like this, we can basically let go right here. And there it is. And let's take this file, this MP3, and drag it to this over here. And there it is, right here. You can even take text. So if you take this text from here and copy it here, and then go up here and you can paste the text into a terminal window over here. And Command V to paste. And there's the terminal text. So it's really cool that it works between two Macs and that's even before Apple even enabled it for use. So that's really cool that Zooaway figured out a way to enable that. And again, if you wanna do that, take a look at my video and I'll show you how to set it up and get it working. So let's jump real quick into the benchmarks. On macOS Monterey Beta 5, this Mac Mini ran a benchmark score of 1758 for a single core and a 77.53 for a dual core. And on beta six, it ran a 1754 and a 7701. So really close on those numbers. And again, they're going to vary a little bit, but we only do this test to make sure that it's not off by a far margin. If it is, then we realize that maybe there's something going on with this current beta that we might need to take a closer look at. Now that we have that under cover, let's talk about OpenCore Legacy Patcher. For anybody that's using macOS Monterey, on your unsupported Mac from 2012 to 2014, this information is for you. One thing that happened in Mac OS Monterey Beta 3 that I didn't cover in the last video was, is that there's a problem currently with Bluetooth. This MacBook Pro here is a early 2013, 15 inch model, and it's running the latest version of Mac OS Monterey Beta 6. The installation part, the first two parts went good. There was only one part at the very end where it had to do a restart. It did kernel panic and shut off. I had to turn it back on or force power it off. And it came back on with a kernel panic message and then I was able to get into the OS. So that's something that you want to keep an eye out for. Anything could really happen between beta releases and that's why I wanted to talk about the Bluetooth. As you can see, if you install macOS beta 4, 5, and 6, the Bluetooth is not functioning here. So you can see up here, the Bluetooth is off and you can't turn it back on. If you try to turn it back on, it does not work. See that? So to fix that, I've got a fix for you. I've got a command and I'll put this in the description. It's killing the Bluetooth processes and it will restart and then you can turn on Bluetooth. So let's run that now, run that command. We'll type in our password. And then as soon as we do that, go up here and then turn on Bluetooth real quick. 
Give it a second, it's not gonna activate, but you will see it turn on and there's Bluetooth and it's working. At least there's a workaround to get it to work. So all you have to do is run that command every time you restart the machine and it will work. Hopefully the developers can figure out a way to get that fixed before uh, the release of Mac OS Monterey. And that's Mac OS Monterey Beta 6. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this update. Did you install it? How did it go? Did you update your unsupported Mac? Is it working okay? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It'll really help me out. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on the subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, I really appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.